Kick. We are live. You can come join us if you want. If not, that's cool. Just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to go to family from Chicago to the UK. Now, the UK don't know nothing about this, apparently. Bet, 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 I got you. The UK don't know nothing about this. I had to show them the boondocks. I had to show them the Fleece Johnson interview. I had to show them everything. I heard this one was crazy itself, man. Don't forget, we do got the Patreon. Get off of here. And we do got a Discord as well. <sighs> Y'all can come back on, on Twit on Kick. Y'all can leave and come back, but I'm, I got to. You hear me? Uh, man, let's get let's get right into it. Man, what was the young fleece like? When did you get started? Where was you born? Let me move. And uh, tell us a little bit of your, about your childhood. Well, I was born in uh, Louisville, Kentucky, West End of Louisville. Projects called Southwick versus most violent projects in Louisville. And I live right across the street from the school. Duval. Yeah, my uh, my parents went to Duval. Uh, what about uh, when did you when when did the minutes come out? Cause you you got started well, pretty early. Yeah, let's well, get straight into I it. Came out, yeah, early. I said I was about I was about twelve when it came out. What, what was your first crime? Well, my first crime was. Uh, Still in a car. Damn. At twelve? Yeah. First wow. crime was a car theft? You weren't I, playing. No, nah, I wasn't. And I used to steal cars. I had a little gang. And we steal cars and we'd go mess with the police. You know, I drive right up to the parking lot when they change ship, run into one of them, cuss and make them chase us. And we had a position where we will take him through the alley to initiate to get in our gang. You will have to. Oh, so he is a gang member. Okay. Do this. Bring the police through the alley. We be sitting on the cut. And when we see your car. Kentucky. Louisville, Kentucky. Trouble by the alley. We know they right in back of you. So when they come out of the alley, we'll hit them. Flip them. Flip their cars and shit. The police? They... <laughs> So this went on for quite a while, man, and the police caught all my little gang members, and they all told on me. And so now they want to get me. So, but they could never catch me because I was too good. You know, at least I thought I was, right? Right. And then one night on 30, uh, 34th Street, they blocked the whole street off in a U, just a, a, a horseshoe, right? And uh, it's about 30, 40 police cars out there, and all of them just open up, start shooting. Wow. And uh, they thought they killed me. And the ambulance was already there, and the people in the projects came out, they heard all the gunshots and stuff. So the police told me, he said, if it wasn't for your nigga friend, we killed your black ass. So I, I believe you. Louisville, Kentucky. I don't know what year you thought. You said you was 12. You look old right here. So you, you got to be back before. You know what I'm saying? Spit on him in the back of the police car. Well, he went for his gun. And the other police that was driving took his hand off the stoning wheel to try to stop him. And we on Broadway. And the car is going like that. And so they called back up and they took me out of there and put me in another police car, right? Well, I went to the children's detention at the time. So it was at JCYC? No. It wasn't? No. This is children's center. That's okay. what they called it. And uh, my mom could have got me out that same day, but she said she's going to let me stay there for the night. So the next day we get out. So the Courage on the newspaper, the leading newspaper in Louisville, in uh, Kentucky, Maine, they put that on the front page uh, at shooting right there. So we could have got some money over there. 
But my daddy, he wants to go up to the police station, tell him that uh, he ain't gonna file no lawsuit, that he taught me a lesson, and all that. And he was just talking stupid, and I just got up and ran up out of the door. Hell, dad, I would've sued them for every dollar they had. You blocked up. I mean, he was, this, he was a menace, though. He Flipping police cars is crazy. The little office room came outside, two police was talking. And one of them's car was stolen, and I drunk and stole it right there in the dirt, right? Stole the police car, right? Right. After your daddy told them that he learned a lesson? And I'm known for doing a lot of stuff, and I started carrying pistols when I was 13. Two of them, 45, nickel plated. I had twins. And uh, so I robbed everybody. I robbed crap gangs, dope fiends, prostitutes, faggots, sickies, uh, you name it. I was known for it. I was the most fair young person in Louisville at that time. You know, and I ain't have no fear of the police, right? Now, this is before the 90s. This is before the 90s. Got to be the 80s or something. And uh, as a matter of fact, another thing. He said he was 12. He like 60. 70. And in the projects of Colin Holmes, I'm driving through there in a stolen car. No, nah, he like 60. They got him spread eagle on the ground like this. You know, making him, you know, it's shameful. I got out of the car and drew on the police. Took their weapons. Got my cousin up out of the streets and we took off. That's the type of person I was, right? So I was such a menace that when they finally caught up to me, they said, we're going to send him to the penitentiary. You know. All his life. He said he was doing this at 13. I got locked up for 16 robberies, eight shooting and wounded, and a car fell. Damn. So in a plea agreement, I took 12 years. At 16 years old. At 16. No, I was 15. At 15. Yeah, I was 15. And they sent me to the penitentiary. Even though back then. Wait, he was 15 in a penitentiary? Ah, oh, man, they wasn't playing with him. 15 took 12 years in a penitentiary. He was 15 a bunch around a, 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 around a bunch of grown men. They had a law back then that juveniles can't go to a dark prison. They sent me. They say fuck that law, they sent me. Bang. So, when I get to prison, the same newspaper, Career Journal, they came down to interview me my first day there. 15. The headline read, 16 year old prisoner wants to get out and go straight. That's the headline. Mm -hmm. So, and they still got that headlines in the career journal. I had a friend that she had to pay $15, 20 to get it, you know, but they still got it on file. So, when I hit prison, you know, I see a lot of people out of robbed and stuff, and they talking shit. Oh, it's just going to be a good day. Look who they just brought in. But what they didn't realize, I had two brothers locked up, two cousins, and... Uh, a handful of just die hard gangster niggas, you know. Yeah. Oh, so you walked into a family affair. You walked in, you was good in there, okay. I started fighting down there, and my brother, they run all up to my brother, tell your little brother this and that, for we heard him, my brother, like, you ain't gonna do shit to him, you know. And so I fought and fought. And they had this dude down there named Reggie. Okay. Big old, I'm talking about, you know, back then they was wearing afros. Mm -hmm. This motherfucker had a big ass chest. His chest was so big that he can put a king good on his chest and level it. It stuck out so far, <laughs> you know. And every time I go take- So like this, he could put it on like this and it's, that's crazy. Like a shower. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This nigga come in the shower behind me. All them muscles and all that shit. I ain't have no muscle, you know. And he used to stir at me. You know, I look over at him. This nigga was washing up, 
throwing it right at me. So I'm like, you know, I tell my little partners and shit, what's wrong with this nigga? Just keep staring at me and shit, right? How old are you at this time? 16. Wow. This nigga is in his 30s. Hmm. You know, and uh, I'm a child, you know, and I guess he thought he had some fresh meat, you know. So one day, you know, this went on and on. I ain't never said nothing to him about it. To be truthful. You were scared? I was sort of like afraid of this nigga. For this nigga was this huge, man. I just said, God damn. I can't do nothing with this nigga here, man. Just ignore him, right? But one day he came out of the shower and brushed against me <laughs> naked <laughs> and said, excuse me. But well, I know the nigga did it on purpose, right? So I said, okay, that's it. So they had glass paint jobs that they sold the inmates out of commissary. So I went back there and took a paint job, dumped the shit out and broke it. I come back in that motherfucking bathroom. He said uh, he was going to the store that day and asked me if he could pick me something up from the store. Nigga, you don't know me like that. So I already know what you done already brushed up against me naked. Yeah, you know what time it is. This is American jail. You know what time it is. He trying to, he trying to, he trying, he trying to make you his. You know what I'm saying? I felt your goddamn dick hit my side of my leg. Right. All that excuse me shit. Come on, bro. I took that motherfucking tank job and I said, I, man, I cut the fuck out of this nigga. This nigga ran, I'm right in the back of him, cutting him, slicing him, everything. When I broke the glass, it, it had points on it. And, uh, yeah. And so, because I did that, the guards and the administration back in, they said, look, you think you a tough little son of a bitch. We gonna send you somewhere, motherfucker. And we gonna see how tough you are. So they sent me to Eddieville. The maximum security penitentiary. At 16? Yeah, yeah when I get down, uh, here's what got me about that prison. When I come on the yard, man, I'm 17. All these people 17. in their 40s and 50s and 30s. I'm a child, the only young child in a. Man, I was walking across the loop going towards the property room. I see all these motherfuckers laying out kissing and shit, right? And back then, Eddieville didn't have a dress code. You can, we, we can wear our own clothes then. The sisters can come out with thongs and bikinis and panties and all this shit, you know. And motherfuckers were laying around kissing and shit. So I'm like, what the fuck they got me at, man? You know, and uh, so everybody staring at me and I kept hearing the word nigga, nigga this, nigga that. I said, man. All these blacks down there, they tolerating this shit. I said, man, the first time one of them called me a nigga, I'm going to show them what type of nigga I really am, right? I'm a bad-ass nigga, you know. And so I ignored it. And the second day, I get in the fight right there in the kitchen. They had some old bullshit out that uh, can't nobody eat cheese. If you eat cheese, you a wreck. They had that bullshit out then, and people come through the dining room. That don't even make sense. Cheese is, you know what I'm saying? Cheese is a delicacy. Cheese is good. Oh, they have hamburgers around. You don't know, put cheese on. Wouldn't nobody get the cheese. So I told the man, I said, I ain't know nothing about this shit. So I said, oh, can I get some cheese? He gave me a whole block of it. He said, yes, you can. So when I sent it at the table, my trade, my friend from, uh, the grain, the other prison. He said, man, get that off your table, man. You eat that shit, everybody gonna think you're a red. I said, fuck them. I mean, eat what the fuck I wanna eat. And I dare one of them call me that. And I heard a table, somebody kept saying, man, man, man. I said, who the fuck is saying that? So I looked over and seen a group of white guys looking right. This man can't be taken advantage of. He wouldn't be here if he didn't want to be here. And that me. And when, when I seen that red come out of his mouth, I just went over and, 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 and just swung on the whole table. Everybody, so I went to the hole. So 
the girls and them thought this was going to, like the white girl that was racist. So they said, we're going to put you back. You know, we went in front of the Justice Committee. They said, we're going to let you out of the hole. And I guess they thought I wasn't going to come back out. And yeah, I came out and it was an old black man. He said, I don't know who you are. I mind what you did. I'm too old to fight. He said, but take it. You don't need it. He gave me a butcher knife. I took it, and I seen that same group of white boys that I swung on come down the step. Coming, I already know they coming for me, right? So I just took off running straight towards them with the knife in my hand. I said, fuck it. You know, they might kill me, but I'm Yeah, at this point, it's A to B, A to B, eight. Uh, eat or be eight. The situation you didn't put yourself in back in. I don't even believe that this was in the 80s. This might have been the 70s. I don't know. How old is Fleece? Get some motherfuckers out with me. So you doing this since 17, 18 years old? Yeah, I ran straight towards him. And then when I got almost up on him, they was hollering, hey, yo, yo, ho, slow down, bro. Slow down, man. We ain't come to fight. They say, man, we don't know who put that shit out, man. But I've been eating cheese. All my life, I ain't no goddamn rent, this and that. So it was the first situation I had to go into straight now. That's when my name got established. So now they going to put me in a cell. So they know who Fleece is at that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so they put me in a cell with this big old black motherfucker. They call him Doc, Big Doc. All this motherfucker look like shit. King Kong was somebody. <laughs> he had a big old his nose was about the size of my fist. He had a big old nose, red eyes, and he was a big motherfucker with big fangles and shit. He just looked like he was just made to fight. Yeah. You know, like a gladiator type motherfucker. So I'm in a cell with him. They had double cells then. I stopped that long. I'll tell you about that. Mm -hmm. Well, this motherfucker, that's the one I was telling people about it, hit that hole in the wall. Yeah, that was to uh, trick the the yeah. younger people, right? Yeah. Go, go, ahead, yeah. go ahead and tell us about that. Cause yeah, he had a hole in his wall. See, what he did, it was a hole in his wall. So he took a little balloon thing and put some baby powder in it and blowed it up to where it screwed up. So he pressed it into the hole, stuck it in it. Okay. And then took a sheet of paper and put some cement on it. And when it hardened, he taped it over the hole and then painted it over it where it looked like... A regular paint. wall. Okay. Like, I didn't know the shit was that. Mm -hmm. So he started talking crazy and shit. He got a fuck something, all this old shit. He got a what? Fuck something. Oh, okay. He trying to get somebody to mess you with. Know, he was trying to fuck me. <laughs> so that's what his mind was all right. He was trying to fuck me, right? Yeah. So back that time, the door opened. We went out for child, right? Hey, I'm going to remind y'all one more time, G. Hey, stay out of prison. Especially American prisons. Stay up out of them. Don't ever, ever go to one of them country prisons. In the country, do not do it. Don't go to no state out of jail because this is this is a long time ago but stuff like this in american jails is still waiting on you like this this is wild he said bro knows was this yo so i was telling some of my friends out there man this big black motherfucker <laughs> and so they gave me a little knife a little, little knife because the, the butcher knife i use on the other incident i had to get rid of that because if they caught me with it, they was gonna charge me with it, you know. Right, right. My outside charge. Mm -hmm. So I got another night. So I went back in you know, the the thing, so this nigga put on a pair of shorts. They had a lot of holes in it. Well, where, whenever he walked his shit will pop out of one of the holes, right? And he'll put it back in his drawers and I'm like, I said, this is a nasty ass nigga. <laughs> but I ain't gonna lie, I was I was afraid. I, I was actually afraid, and then when that nigga uh, sounded off and hit that damn wall, and his arm went through the bust that thing, and you know, it made a big old boom noise, like, mm -hmm. like he knocked the bricks out of the goddamn wall, right? 
and all this shit was floating in the earth. I didn't know it was baby powder. I thought it was fragments of cement. Right. You know, the dust. You just thought his fist was that Yeah, arm. and his arm was white. Oh, and shit. so the big dude did it for like an obstacle and illusion. Like, let me put some fear into your heart. And I was like, and he run up on me. Nigga, do I gotta fight you, nigga? Nigga, ah. Like, this is in Kentucky. Hey, shit. <laughs> <laughs> what state has the best prison? What kind of question is that? Man, I don't know. Best in terms of what? Fuck, I'm going to do None. Zero of them. This nigga gonna get it. Yeah, out. Norway. Go to Germany. Some good ass, right? <laughs> and, uh... I'm like, shit. <laughs> Fuck, I'm going to do this nigga gonna give him some good ass, right? <laughs> and uh, I wasn't thinking about it. I was like, man, if I'm gonna let this nigga penetrate me. <laughs> you know. Hey, I'm sorry. Yo, the, 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 the choice of words is crazy. Am I gonna let him penetrate? I can't even repeat nothing like that. That's crazy. Hey, yo, yo, no. And he made one mistake. What did he? I moved at little night, because I already hit that night, it stuck my leg, right? Mm -hmm. And brought me back to my senses, nigga. You got a <laughs> hey, his storytelling bit, his storytelling is the, hey, A1, low key, this is crazy. Nah, nah, we not none of that, but I'm just, hey, shout out to the community, but this is crazy. So when I move, and go I back. Know, I was like, man, if I'm going to let this nigga finish <laughs> you know. Hey. And he made one mistake, because when I move, that little knife, because I already hit that knife. It stuck him and brought him back. And brought me back to my senses. That's funny, too. Man, I gripped that mother. I'm left-handed, but I gripped that with my right hand, right? Because mm. it was sitting on my right side. Right. And I ain't had time to switch it over to the left, right? Mm -hmm. So I just came up with it, slap, and just ripped all that open, right? Up there. It cut him good, right? He ran to the door. God, God. So I ran him back up and hit his ankles and shit, right? Mm -hmm. Brought him down to the ground. And I stabbed the shit out of him, right? Mm -hmm. And then when the guards finally came up to him, to the cell, they was telling me I done backed all the way up to the back uh, by the toilet, and they like it's gonna be all right. Just put the put the put the knife down, put it down. I was shaking and everything, man. Right. Blood everywhere. Well, I finally gave them the knife. They took this nasty nigga, <laughs> hey. and they transferred. I don't know if he died or what. I went to the hole. They did the same thing. Let me out. They ain't even give me an outside charge for that because they know what type of motherfucker he was. He was, he was one of them type. Right. right. So then everything still going good. You know, people start. So I didn't show y'all the part of the interview. I'm talking to the stream uh, chat. I'm talking to chat right now. But in the interview, he say he not. A community member, he said, "No, nah, this don't make me gay." He said, "I'm do, I'm, I, I'm. It's a necessity." So in his mind, he not, you know what I'm saying? All right, continue. We ain't even get to none of that yet. But let's continue. Thinking twice before they tried me, and I, you know, and uh, they looked at me like I was the only black person in our. They would fight back. I mean, really fight back. And so I hear the thing, man. Uh, hey! I kept seeing these. Mm. What's going on, y'all? All right, Flea. So, so now you you seeing men in thongs and swimming suits and all that. What what yeah. was that about? Well, the prison. If you really look at it, I mean, it's common sense. If you go to a woman's prison, what did he just say? Yeah. I mean, it's common sense. If you oh, go common to sense. a woman's prison, the person. That is running that prison is the dykes. They run, they, they the one that whooped the girl. And Eddieville was the same way back then. It was mostly populated with just 
gay shit, you know. And these sisters had so much power where if if you spoke bad yeah. to one of them, they killed you. Know? That that's pretty much what he said in the interview. Low key, this last comment. Let me move, G, because I'm I'm feeling a little unsafe. Get over here. You had to. Well, who would kill you? The inmates, they husbands and boyfriends and all the gay motherfuckers, right? Mm. And so you got to address them as like you would address a woman. Ma'am, miss. Yeah, ma'am, miss. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am, and all that shit, right? Mm. Uh, and call her, call him a, a she. How old are you at this time? I'm still seventeen when all this is going on, man. And I'm just and this all it, you know. So I said, man, fuck this bro, shit. first year in the in shit, right? So I started disliking all that shit, mm -hmm. you know, and but. They didn't want to come in or... I ain't even gonna lie, bro. He kind of need a movie or something. He need a Netflix special. Something, 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 something. It'd it go crazy. In America, this is this is not this is dollars. I'm talking about this motherfucker's ass was so fat. Wait, what? They shit, mm -hmm. you know, and but. They ain't one to come in or I'm talking about this motherfucker's ass was so fat. And he was this this is like a motherfucker's <laughs> like your baby mama. That motherfucker's ass was fat. Well, ungodly fat, right? right? And he gets in the shower with me. And we was the only two in the shower. And uh I turned around and I seen that soap going down his back through the crack of his <laughs> <laughs> Yo, yo, what is happening? Oh my no! No way that this is the, this is real. This is really this man' life. This is really Fleece Johnson. This is really Fleece. This is really Fleece. Do y'all hear this man's storytelling ability? This is crazy. Fat, right? right? And he gets in the shower with me. And we was the only two in the shower. And, uh, I turned around and I seen that soap going down his back through the crack. And, like, God damn. and I knew I had a problem right there, right? Yeah. I mean, seriously. Mm -hmm. I said, like, fuck his shit, man. I ain't, I ain't cut like that. But man. you hadn't done nothing then. I ain't done shit. Okay. And so, it's wrong. Uh, I said, about. This is this is the this is the origin story of Fleece Johnson. Eight to ten years in, you know, motherfucker get tired of all that jacking off shit. You know, and being that I came in so early, I didn't have no memories of girls that I don't fuck because I ain't even had a woman yet. Mm -hmm. You know. Oh man. When I was in jail at fourteen. I ain't even fuck with a woman yet. You know, I ain't never kissed one. None of that shit. Now I'm in the penitentiary around all this shit, right? Mm. So, you know, you switch from masturbating to looking at freak magazines, mm -hmm. you know, porn magazines. Right. Right, a virgin in jail. Like, he was brought, he was born in the darkness. You know, like Batman and Bane, and he was born in the darkness. Oh, that was the big thing. You know, Burnt out is crazy. crazy. You know, Son got to jail, man. So you were you wasn't you wasn't necessarily gay when you went in because you no. you didn't even like seeing it at first. No, I wasn't gay. Period. Okay. See what I'm saying? He said he ain't gay. Period. You know, when I went in that motherfucker, is what that I hated like that shit? Right. You know, I hated the sight of it. You know. And when I used to rob them on the streets and shit, right, I used to smack them and all that shit, right? Mm -hmm. I remember when I got got locked up in jail before I went to prison, all them sisters was, I was 30 years, 30 years, that's that motherfucker that robbed us on the street, all that shit. And uh, 
Now I'm back to the penitentiary. Mm -hmm. Man, you see so much shit going on in now. It's like a different environment, a different community. You know, it's like a different world for real. Right. Everybody was into it. I can't. They were, I uh, kissing. They allowed it back then, mm. and we had a swimming pool in in that prison. So y'all was in the swimming pool frolicking, frolicking with each other. Yeah, the swimming pool in prison. This is a maximum security prison. What a swimming pool. Toughest in America. And we had a pool. We had a swimming pool. We had go karts, roller skates, indoor and outdoor, all that shit. Was Germany somehow involved in Like, what are you talking about? Y'all had an amusement park in y'all? See, the correction cabinet in Kentucky, they didn't want to put us to the street shit that other prisons in other states put their prisoners through, right? Right. They felt like it's in our community. As long as we respect it, they gonna give us privileges. You know, roller skates, we got swimming oh, we got a, a, a real softball court, baseball, football field. We had a, a basketball full court inside of a gym. We had one outside, we had another one outside, we had another, we had four full court basketball. I mean, we had it all that shit, right? Right. So, but here's what they did. Type shit. They used to have something they called salt peel. That's what they used to have something they called salt peel. What's that? That's what they put in your food, right? Okay. Salt peter? Yeah, it's supposed to, uh, or do something in you where you can't get hold. Okay. Keep your shit soft. But if you put too much, you know, it'll have the reverse effect. You know, it'll make everybody whole. Uh, so the inmates that worked in the kitchen called itself like playing jokes and shit. Most of them was gay, so they wanted to see that shit. Mm -hmm. So they would put a lot of it in the food. Wow. What the hell is that? Soft Peter? And you awake, you walk around all day long, hard and shit, looking at each other. Everybody want to stir each other down and shit. You know, like who's gonna give it up? Give what up? I mean, goddamn. I mean, we all sitting here and hard and motherfucker. Nah, nah. I, I 100. Ain't no way this is fabricated in your mind. You did not just. Build a wall and stuff fake files in from your life. I believe him. This man is institutionalized since age 15. This is real life. He don't got time. To be, well, he got time, but he don't got the, the capacity to make stuff up. He in jail. He can't be in there make-believing. This is crazy. This is... Well, whoever got the fattest ass, I guess. You know right. Motherfuckers, whoever got the fattest ass, I guess. Wait, how do we get... We get what up? I mean, goddamn. I mean, we all sat here and hard and... Motherfuckers, whoever got the fattest ass, I guess. You right. know. Fuck, that, that didn't really resonate to me. And I'm going to keep it real, 100, though. Okay. After about 10 years in, man, I'm, I'm burnt out on jack... or masturbating, jacking off, or uh, reading, looking at free books. So, by that time, my reputation in other people. But you had two years left on your sentence. You couldn't hold off for two more years? Felice? Mr. Johnson? Yeah, right. I don't fought so many battles and fights and stuff. I ain't lost shit. Mm -hmm. I ain't lose one fight in our none. You know, I fought inmates. I fought the racist motherfuckers. I fought all the cliques. You know, all that crip and blood and GDs, all that shit went on the streets when I was there that. But while I was locked up, all that stuff still coming in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, this was, this was, yeah, they, 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 he said it wasn't no crip, blood, no GDs. This, this was a long time ago. This was before the 70s. About 60s, 70s, 70s, 70s. Mm-hmm. 
you know, and then they start uh, taking away our privileges because these young motherfuckers are coming in and start their bullshit. Everybody in blue want to fight everybody in red and in some prison rats. Mm -hmm. So they took all our clothes, took our shoes, took, started taking all our shit, you know. So I'm saying, shit, fuck it. You know, I got a little life in this motherfucker, you know. So I seen one of them running his mouth. So this this is the first incident where you put that jacket on somebody fleece where you put that fleece on. Somebody. And, and let's talk about how tough he was and shit. Right there, you know, I one day I went to the shower and him and his little road dog they came in the shower. They talking about whooping somebody and all that shit. But when I turned around and looked and see who was doing all that talking outside with him. Mm -hmm. Man, his ass was so fat. I said, God damn. <laughs> he need to give that ass up. What is he talking about fighting who, nigga? You need to give somebody some booty, nigga. <laughs> you know, I to like what, the, what the hell is happening? But we knew. We knew all that shit was just talk like Right. Most of them coming out on that gangster shit, man. They ain't gangsters for real, bro. That's why you gotta just go in jail and just if you go if you decide to, you know what I'm saying, make that mistake. Just hey, don't go in there overdoing it, cause somebody gonna try your card. And a Fleece Johnson is lurking behind every prison door. Man, y'all gotta hey, listen, stay free. They ain't gangsters for real. That's a shield. Mm-hmm. It's a shield. When you see people acting tough for no reason. Protection, right? like a protection. That's, that's a fact. That's a, protection, like that's a fact. Like they erected a shield. Like, mm -hmm. So the only thing you can see is what they're talking. Mm -hmm. You can't see what's behind it, right? right. As you bust through that motherfucking shield, you'll see who's behind it. What you mean by that? A, a cowboy, a gay motherfucker. You ain't got your guns in there, bro. Right. You know, and you try to click up with motherfuckers, and if they ain't got your back, Young, young. Yeah, this is definitely getting yellow marked. I'm not even gonna try to monetize this one. Yeah, I'm just gonna let it ride, like you know what I mean. You know, and when you break down the click and, and get a motherfucker on his own, I didn't just walk up to him and taking an ass in prison. Let me tell you, it's just the way he be wording stuff be crazy. Along with the way he speak as well is just wild. Taking ass in prison, let me tell you, they give it up. Don't nobody take shit. You ain't gotta take nothing. You ain't gotta take shit. You can just break through that little that little shield they got up. All that tough talk shit. Break through that. It's something they won't do to me. They won't give it up. He said he ain't never take it. They gave it up. That's what he just said. Wow. You know, and I don't. I started picking up time and shit, and I went down with twelve years and picked up forty. So your initial charge was at for twelve years at sixteen, and you spent forty. Yeah, we're we going to get into that because I, I think it's pretty wild. You had a 12 year beard and end up doing 40. How? Now, now, now you, uh, you, you're about 10, 10 years in, so you're in your mid 20s. And uh, now, now what's going on in your life in prison at this point? Well, uh, the first thing that goes on in people's lives in prison is the people on the streets, your loved ones, and your family. Don't they start forgetting about you, right? Back on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop sending you money. Don't come and visit you. You just like on your own. Don't nobody want to fuck with you, you know? And I'm like, fuck them. I don't need them anyway, right? Mm -hmm. So prison is just like the streets, you know, in a certain way because we got to live in our and survive and people get robbed in our all the time. If you got money, you better know how to fight. If you don't know how to fight, somebody gonna take your money and take your ass and all that with it, mm -hmm. you know. And so I start running shit 
you know. uh, let me let me ask you. I don't mean to interrupt you. Let me ask you a question real quick because you said because it's been it's been said that you was taking ass, and you just said and right. now you don't right. have to take no ass. No, nah, you don't have to take shit. Motherfuckers give you ass, man. Now, I'm, I'm gonna ask everybody to listen to this shit. Now I'm gonna ask you this. What? Okay, you finna ask us a question. Listen to this shit. Now, I'm going to ask you this. What is the big fucking difference? A ass is ass. In my book. You know. In, in your book because of where you are at the time. Yeah, no, uh, period. 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 <laughs> On the streets in prison, <laughs> a ass is ass, you know, to me. <laughs> you know, ass is ass, bro. <laughs> I mean, you know, you, you like, out here... In, in, in society, mm-hmm. you got a lot of women out here. Right. You know, and motherfuckers don't need. What is the difference? One butt is attached to a woman and one butt is attached to a man. Anatomy is the. The rest of the anatomy is the difference, fleece. Go that route. You know, you got ladies out here, you got motherfuckers out here, you can fuck for uh, a bird. <laughs> Two dollars, ten dollars, shit like that. Right. You never need to go do anything, you know. But in the penitentiary, mm-hmm. how many people you know is strong enough? You know, you got a lot of fake motherfuckers that sit there and tell you a lot of shit about, man, I did thirty years or forty years or twenty something years, and ain't nothing. I ain't never did. He's a he's lying. That's a goddamn lie. It, it was said again. I'm sorry. He, he did. You, got, you got people that get out of prison that done did a lot of prison time mm-hmm. over 15 years, and they kind of tell people when they get out, "Yeah, man, I." I so he was born in 1967, somewhere around there, and he went to jail at. In 1982, so he was in jail in the 80s, somewhere around there, probably 1980, 1982. Because this is his first interview as a free man. He just got out. He's been in jail his entire life. He knows no freedom. He knows no world. He knows no free world before the age of 15. I was strong, you know, man. I held up. He's lying like shit. He didn't do shit, but what everybody else did in the penitentiary. They sneak around, get their dick sucked, fuck somebody in the ass, buy ass. They they sell ass in our, uh, them sisters in our cells. You know, just like prostitutes do on the streets. And them sisters in our look like women. Behave like them, conduct themselves like them, talk like them, and they have all the women traits. You know, they have the big hips, the big butts, the small waistlines. Some of them got titties, you know. And some of them is just think they was uh, women. And it's hard for a motherfucker that been in for a long time to see them keep walking back and forth past yourself with all their booty hanging out and shit. Not trying to get none, you know. Right. And so... And uh, it's like it is on the street. Whoever got the most money can get whatever the fuck he wants in the penitentiary. You gotta have money to get it. That's why I ran stores, poker games. I did all kinds of shit, right? And I accumulated a lot of money. Yeah, no, no, there's no solution for him. This is, this is him. This is his life. It's over with. This is him. He's, that's what I'm saying. He's institutionalized. There's nothing that can change his way of thinking. <laughs> that's it. You started doing this in your mid twenties to late twenties. No, nah, I was in my thirties when I started making all that money. Okay. And uh, I I put my nieces and nephews through college. So at that point, you accept? Wait, who? You was in college in, in jail paying tuitions? Okay. Okay. You was gonna be there for the rest of your yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. I done picked up so much time. I said I ain't gonna never get out because I ain't gonna never accept no disrespect. 
I'm not gonna let no motherfucker disrespect me and and just pat him on the back. No, I'm gonna fuck your ass up, right? Yeah. And so type one, stuff, jail oh, stuff. You know, he thought he was sick. You know, like in Pentech, he owed me. Well, he he bought a pack of cigarettes, so he got to pay two back. Double. Tax bank. Yeah. Double. You know, give him a week. Give him on a Friday. Always pay on Friday. Mm-hmm. Come Friday, he said his money didn't get come in, so the two went to three. That's entry. So when he didn't pay at the next week, the three went to five, and the five to eight, on up. And eventually, this motherfucker owed me eight boxes of cigarettes. Then his money finally came. You know. So he going to try to shortcut me. You know, he gonna give me four boxes of cigarettes. I say, hey, bro, you owe me eight. I know I owe you, and hey. I don't know what else to do. What going on, I'm y'all? I tell you what to do. Pay me my goddamn money. You know, pay me my goddamn money. And I looked at him real hard, like, you know, yeah. He said, I, I said, yeah, I am, sir. Pay me my money, I'll give me some ass. Oh, I didn't hear that part. Pay me my money. Oh, oh, that was the ultimatum? The ultimatum was crazy. You know, what? he said, I don't play that shit. I don't do that. I don't do this. And I said, all right, bro. Well, I'll see you. i see you tomorrow then. He already know what that means. You know, I'll see you tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So before we came out of our sales, the next day, he sent the note down. Wait, he sent the note? And in the note, he said, do we know a place where we can go and we can do it where we won't get caught? Wow. <sighs> so he ain't even had to t- I'm keep it real with you. I fucked the shit out of him. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did. to say it like that though what you mean i'm gonna keep it real with you we knew keep it real with you i fucked the shit out of him <laughs> yeah i did i fucked his ass and i felt good about it right it. <laughs> oh my god. god and this was a man that wasn't even doing this it. was a motherfucker that claimed he wasn't gay he didn't do shit he wasn't like it, but he owed me. Pay me, motherfucker. You know, he gave me some booty. I said, like, God damn, that was good. That was good, good ass right there. <laughs> so I'm living my life in the <laughs> Oh, man, this is wild. I'm never getting back out. That's what I thought. I'm never going back to the street, so I might as well. Make a life for this. I'm getting me a motherfucking wife in this motherfucker. You know. Yeah, you going into what, 20 years in at this point? Yeah, yeah, I need me a goddamn wife or something. I need motherfuckers to suck my dick on the regular. I need to fuck ass, whatever, jack me off, whatever we want to do. And if you want to consider that something wrong to do, then don't get on me, get on the mall maker. Because they the motherfuckers that put motherfuckers in these penitentiaries. All males and all females in the same, you know, just separators. You know, and the Bible says, in the beginning, when God created man. <laughs> he didn't quote the Bible. Oh, my God. This progressively gets, progressively gets wilder and wilder by the minute, every minute that passes. What made God create the woman? You, you go back to the beginning of the Bible and say, it is not good that a man should be alone. Why ain't it good? Well, I just told you why. Because if you ain't got, uh, they, they gonna fuck each other. Somebody, motherfuckers dick get all they fucking. It's simple as that, fucking. So, people like, look at, look at it like, ah, it's nasty. Now it's life. It's not life. All right. 
And if you was locked up, you It's prison that. life. Shit. I don't give a fuck who you are listening to this shit. If you was locked up after you get in about eight to ten years in that motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, no, 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 I forgot. Pause. Definitely this is Paul. Pause. Pause, y'all, for watching this. But I had to. Like, like I know the background. Of, I seen the whole, I seen the whole documentary. I seen the whole documentary of this when he was on the, uh, whatever show it was. I seen the whole documentary. So when I seen this pop across my timeline, I was like, oh, man, this is going to be crazy. Get your dick sucked on the slick side. It was a whole lot of these little gangsters in the world, but they was trying to sneak around doing shit, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Fleece. So it's a whole lot of little tough guys come out of my city, Louisville. They come in there and try to, you know, these is flat niggas. These is niggas that hit all the women on the streets and shit, right? But here's the thing you ain't realizing. And, and all you young motherfuckers is out there fucking. Keep this in your mind. That same sex drive you hit on the street, well, you just gotta fuck all the time. You fuck this girl, go across town, fuck another girl, fuck your bad friend's girl, and all this shit. That same sex drive will go with you when you get locked up, brother. And that urge to have sex. That urge to come to, to to get that feeling. That's this is four days old. He just got out of prison, literally, like two weeks ago, maybe. I don't know. He's fresh out of prison. He's fresh home from a forty-year bid. Sexual release. That goes with you. That don't stop at the prison gate. That goes in there with you. You know, and a lot of them in there, they turn to, they follow ladies around the yard all day long, jacking off on them and. And, and all this, they call them butt bandits, booty bandits, and all this shit. They got over 150 motherfuckers in Eddieville. They come out of their cell every day looking for one thing, booty. Bro said he's secure in what happened in there. He don't care. They don't want no goddamn food, canteen, or nothing. They want ass. That's what they come out looking for. What do you say all every day looking for one thing, booty? They don't want no goddamn food, canteen, or nothing. They want ass. That's what they come out looking for. And if they find any weakness in you, they, could, they come to get it. They don't give a fuck how you look. So people, so these young people come in with these real high sex drives and shit. So one dude, I, I, I got tired of hearing his mouth. He was talking about these nasty ass sissies down there. That's all they got down there, sissies and all this shit. Little pretty motherfucker. <laughs> you know, it's one of them type of niggas on the street. All the ladies would say, ooh, he's so cute. And all, yeah, niggas in prison say he's cute too. He's a baby doll. <laughs> niggas a baby doll in prison. <laughs> the cute nigga on the street is a baby doll. And, uh, <laughs> and every woman, all you ladies out here, they have. I don't. I wonder how people in Lexington, in Kentucky, feel about like what's happening. All the OGs in Kentucky got to be going through it right now. Kids looking at their grandpas like you was in jail with bro. Like what's going on? Have a man, you know if your man got a fat ass or not. You know, let that go through your man. Do your wait. What? No. They have a man. You know if your man got a fat ass or not. You know, let that go through your mind. Do your, do we have a little fat ass on you or what? <laughs> so when they get him, so I got to hear him do run his mouth so bad. Mm -hmm. And I know I already fucked one of these motherfuckers, right? A couple of them at that time, right? Yeah. So I'm offended, right? So I tell a sissy, I say, well, I'll pay you. See what he's about, right? About two months later, sissy came back and told me, said, guess what? I said, what? She said, we, we kissed. I said, you kissed too? And, and when he told me, I said, oh, little gangster nigga, talking all this shit? Yeah. I said, all right, keep me posted. 
He deu. This man pulled a Chris Hansen on this man in jail. That's tough. I thought you saw which I said, look, bitch. Don't even come to me with that shit. I saw you take a dick in your ass. You a bitch. And it's all to it. You a bitch. So, you know, that happens a lot. And it's a lot of them. It's, it's, it's up in the hundreds. They come out of prison in Kentucky. I don't know about the other prison. Yeah. In Kentucky. Kentucky down bad after this. A lot of them have been fucked. And they own it. They done suck dicks and all this. They come right there. Kentu- Kentucky dudes, when he was locked up, is down bad. You was locked up with fleece. You got some explaining to do. You know, they get these girls. And they come right back out here in the streets on all that front shit, you know. And I, since I've been out, I'm out of prison now. And since I've been out, I'm married and shit. You know, my wife, we be saying, Oh, okay. Time. Motherfuckers come up. Motherfuckers I ain't even thought about. Come up out of, is that Felice? I said, yeah. What's up, dog? Nigga, hey. I said, this is my wife, Darlene. So they go, I mean, my wife. And, and so they be like, hey. Your husband, you know, he's a good man. He saved my life and all, and all that shit. And all that. And a lot of them, I won't say shit about them. You know, that's in the past, man. I'm not going to put your business out here in the street unless you get out here and do a lot of fronting and shit, right? Now, I had one front the other day. Uh, about, about a month ago, uh, he killed a motherfucker in prison. Okay, so he been out of prison at least long enough to get a wife and things of that nature. Knew he was going to get out and get a woman and lock her down immediately because he ain't never had that. And so he's out here. I have to get a job. And this motherfucker's running his mouth about how tough he is and shit. Right? He had everybody a month ago. around him coming to me and say, hey, man, you need to talk to your little buddy, man. I said, what? Man, this motherfucker said he was whooping shit in prison and all that. I said, hey, he killed the motherfucker. I said, he did. I said, what? He said, uh, you was the only motherfucker. He ain't never fought, but he know he can whoop you. I said, whoop who? <laughs> he said, I said, you didn't say that shit. They said, yeah. So I went to him in front of him. A month ago, even out of jail, you were still this dude. Okay. Hey, bro. You run around telling motherfuckers all this shit you did in Penn Tempin, who you killed, and yeah, you killed a motherfucker, you know? And you will fight, but you can't whoop me. Plus, you a bitch. You know, you won't put it out there? I was in there when you sucked dicks, took it in your ass. You know, you even wanted me to be your man, but I didn't want you. I said, I'm lying. He turned his back and said, you win that, brother. And didn't say nothing else, right? And I hated to do that, but you know, sometimes you you, you step up to motherfucker. And I'm a real motherfucker. I keep it 100, 100, I keep it gutter. I don't give a fuck about 
what any motherfucker think about me, right? And because anybody got something to say about me, I got something to say about them, you know, so we can we can go there, you know. I mean, what, what, what sense would it make for a prostitute to say that somebody that uh, have sex with men, he's a dog? Well, what about what you do? Uh, what does a, a motherfucker baby raper look like running his mouth towards somebody? See, in prison, we had to the cold extreme, day. okay. As long as you wasn't a wreck and wasn't a police and you didn't do that baby raping shit, hey, we ain't got nothing to love for you. You know, as long as you keep it real, right? But them motherfuckers that do all that other shit, yeah. But I, I want to, since I've been there, I done had a lot of people uh, confront me. Say, oh, you the booty man. You the booty man, you the, oh, fuck you. I said, I'm what? Are you talking to you, JJJ, three, two, one? Say, you, I'm you the booty man. I saw your documentary, this and that, all that shit. You know, I said, what you want to do, suck my dick? I, is that what you want me to do? Fuck you and your ass? Oh no, uh, I was just saying, man. I like the I like the documentary, all that bullshit. But here's what I want to tell all my young G's, man. Because even though I'm up in age now, I still got my youngness. And yeah, we gonna we gonna cut it right here after this. Go ahead, go yeah. explain. I want all my young niggas to know throughout the whole country, bro. Hey. You got to watch yourself when you go in them places. Your best friends are set you up. I've seen that so many times. Motherfuckers will sell motherfuckers in our, you know, you come in the penitentiary, think a motherfucker's going to ride with you, die with you, and all that shit. But you don't know when you came in, the motherfucker you think is going to ride him down, he done already been bitched out, you know. And when you go on our, you don't give a fuck about what people think about you, bro. I don't give a fuck about what nobody think about. I know who I am, right? Nigga, and like I said in that first interview, nigga, I'm a warrior for real. Well, warrior or not, you can put King Kong in the penitentiary, and I bet you he fucks some ass in her. You know, if he do 40 years in her, he gonna fuck some ass, right? And... So I'm not saying- Stay out of jail. I can't repeat this enough. Don't, hey, y'all don't go in there. You're asking for sympathy uh, for you to uh, uh, look at me any different from how you look at I don't give a fuck how you look at me. I tell a person in a heartbeat. I hear somebody say, you know, one day I got a lot of respect for you. I said, no, keep your respect. I don't need it. Shit. They don't put food on my table, toes on my back, I shoes on my feet. So your respect don't mean shit to me. Whether I get it, I don't have it. And that's what I'm telling every one of you, listen to this shit. I don't give a fuck what you think about it. Yeah, I did it. But I ain't never took it, didn't have to take it. Ass fell in my lap. I hear motherfuckers sitting on his dick, you know. And yeah, you got to be a man to take all this, right? Let's let's save a little bit for him next time. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's the, one of the craziest ways to end the interview that I've ever heard. Somebody got a script or something, man. Tilo, I don't, I don't even know. Just, I mean, hey, do what you do. Leave a like, comment, or 